Um, All right, son, they're gonna come up right here, okay? Okay. All right, go live. There's a different system now. You have it live here. I won't do anything then. Okay. Hi, welcome to In Air's Kitchen. Um, I'm here with Violet and Tulip. Uh, we're going to do hummus today. So uh, I've got some recipes up behind me. I have two different recipes and we're going to go through both of these. Um, if you want to follow along at home, these are the ingredients you're going to need. Uh, don't be intimidated by the five gallon bucket. Uh, I didn't have tahini. And so I borrowed a bucket of tahini from Clover. So this is sort of fun. You can see this is how we this is how we make the tahini uh, or the hummus at Clover. This is a sum tahini, and um, this company does a really beautiful job with the tahini. If you can, you, I'm sure you can order it online. Um, it's really really wonderful. And they um, we put in the order and they grind it for us, so it's always uh, super fresh and really beautiful. And um, this is uh, this is a food service size. So this is if you're curious what that's like. Um, when I was a kid, we had some um, friends of our family who uh, had food service businesses. And they always had an extra five gallon buckets sitting around. Now I think you can get these at Home, home Depot to store stuff in, but um, it's pretty handy. And this, so this is the tahini we're using today. Um, I wouldn't expect you to have a five gallon bucket of tahini at home, so use whatever whatever tahini you can get your hand on. This is an important part of making the silky hummus. And I'm just going to set that aside. Because it's, so gigantic. Um, all right, now let me go through some of the other ingredients that you're going to need to make um, hummus. So we're doing two different versions of hummus. One of them is going to be a silky smooth hummus, and the other is going to be a more chunky rustic hummus. Um, for both of those, you need chickpeas, and we use a really beautiful organic chickpea uh, at Clover. These are the same ones we use at Clover, and. Um, you can see they, these are actually rated by the diameter of the chickpea, which is this crazy thing that they do. But these are um, U.S. grown organic chickpeas. Um, whatever chickpeas you have at home are going to work fine. If you don't have any chickpeas, you can run out and get some. Or maybe don't run out and get some. Maybe order some. Sorry. Forgetting where we are, uh, when we are. Um, you can also get, have a can of chickpeas. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how to work with that. You can follow a lot of this recipe with canned chickpeas just fine. So you need chickpeas. For the silky hummus, you're going to need tahini, and this is in um, a measuring cup because um, I have a huge bucket there and I wanted to get it out of the way, so you would probably have this in a jar or something like that. Uh, you're also going to need some salt. Um, you're going to need lemon juice. I don't have lemons today. I'm all out. And this recipe actually requires quite a few lemons. Um, we're going to substitute vinegar today instead, but I'll talk to you a little bit more about substitutions. But if you, ideally, you'd have lemon juice for this. Garlic, and um, that's, uh, that's going to cover it. We're going to need some water, but it's, it's a pretty simple recipe. Um, olive oil. We're also going to need olive oil. I'll grab that. And, um, and so you're going to need all these ingredients for both recipes. Uh, the silky hummus, though, is going to need the teeny, and the rustic hummus is not. That's the biggest difference in terms of the ingredients needed. Um, we also use baking soda for the silky hummus. I'll talk to you a little bit about how that comes into play. Um, in terms of uh, enjoying the hummus once we've made it, there are a lot of different ways you can use hummus. And I'm sure most of you have your favorite way of eating hummus, but we're going to do two things today. I have some frozen clover pita breads um, that I'm going to heat up in the oven, and those are going to be delicious. And I have some carrots that I'm just going to chop up. We're going to have them raw as some carrot sticks with hummus. All right, so you ready to get started, Vi? Yeah. OK. So if we come over here, uh, what we have here are chickpeas um, uh, cooking. And these are, um, I'll show you. So this one here, that's all like has this webbing on it. It's a mess. Um, this is every day if you went, went over to our commissary or the food trucks when we used to do this, we would always be scraping off all this foam that bubbles up. It's just something that happens. It's more prone to happen with the baking soda version. Uh, basically, if you want to get to a place where you have hummus that's silky, buttery smooth, uh, it's really hard to get there with raw chickpeas that you haven't used an alkaline solution for. So we're getting to that alkalinity with some baking soda, and I'm going to grab one of these, they're hot. I'm going to grab one of these chickpeas out of here. And you can see there's a little bit of um, this, this thing that just mushed off of there. 
Um, well, I'll show that to you in the one that wasn't in baking soda and it's a little more fibrous. So that's one of the things that baking soda, baking soda breaks down. The chickpea itself, here, you, you can come see this if you want to, Violet. Um, when you smush it, when it gets where you want it to be, it's almost waxy feeling in your hand. And it's, it just, it's just gonna smush and it's gonna turn to like that paste. You can dry it, you can break that one up. Yeah, it just sort of breaks into mush in your hands. That's how you know it's done. And so what we did, and I'll post this recipe online. We took dry chickpeas last night and I got them soaking in water. I added some baking soda to that water and I let it soak overnight in that baking soda. In the morning, I rinsed the baking soda off and then I boiled those chickpeas in water. And again, I added a little bit more baking soda. You don't need to add very much baking soda. This recipe is uh, for one cup of chickpeas about half of a teaspoon of baking soda for the soaking liquid, and then another half of a teaspoon of baking soda when you're boiling it, and that's all you need. So it's not a lot of baking soda. It does have a little bit of that baking soda taste. When we add the lemon juice, that will neutralize that because the alkaline and the acid, they're the opposites, so they'll combine with one another and neutralize one another. But if you're really sensitive to the baking soda taste, you may prefer the more rustic hummus. So let's take a look at those chickpeas. These chickpeas then are, um, bring them over here so you can see it. These chickpeas are the chickpeas that soak without baking soda and they cooked without baking soda. And so here you can see more clearly this membrane which is falling off of these chickpeas. And, um, and then you can see behind that the chickpeas. And so I'll take one of these and I'll mush that in my hands. And you can see it's got more um, fibers and other pieces that were broken down in the alkaline version. So um, this one is like a little more rough in my hands. It doesn't get into that, uh, it's not quite as waxy. Uh, it's well cooked, it's down to the spot I wanna have it, but there are little sort of fibrous or chunky pieces in there that are going to keep the hummus from being that super silky smooth hummus in the end. So, um, so this is going to be more similar to the chickpeas you might get out of a can, and that's going to be um, a special preparation of chickpeas to make. A super silky hummus. All right, I'm gonna wash this off my hands again. So that's a little bit about preparing the chickpeas. So just going through these stages, and again, we'll post the recipe online, but first of all, you need to soak chickpeas. If you're going for the silky hummus, you soak them with baking soda. If you're going for the rustic hummus, you don't need the baking soda. If you don't have chickpeas to soak, you can open a can of chickpeas. So you gotta get to the place where you've got chickpeas. Once you soak them, you cook them. If they're out of a can, you don't cook them. But if they're raw and you soak them overnight, you definitely want to cook them. And then uh, once you get to the place where they're cooked thoroughly, and these would be, um, I don't know, these probably cook for an hour and a half for me. Uh, at Clover, we have a method where we actually bake these in like a steam oven. And uh, it sounds really funny, but there's enough humidity in the oven and it sort of like boils them in place and it's a very consistent process. Uh, but these I did on my stovetop, which can work just fine. Um, cool, I think that's, that gets to it. Now, um, we're going to, there, there's also uh, two ways you can um, uh, blend this up. You can use a, uh, a Cuisinart, like food processor, or you can use the blender. Um, we should just pick one. Do you, which, do you care which one we do today, Mike? Um, I don't care. Well, maybe what we'll do is maybe we'll do the blender for the rustic one and we'll do the Cuisinart for the silky one. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, so let's get the Cuisinart out. So I don't know a way to make the hummus without one of these two pieces of equipment. So you either need a good blender or you need a good um, uh, food processor. And let's see where it goes. All right. I probably should move the computer. This is usually where Blue is sitting to answer any questions. Um, looks like somebody asked one already. What about doing overnight soak with dry beans and then using an Instapot? Um, if you can get the Instapot to cook the chickpeas to a consistency that you really like, that would be a fine way to do it. Um, I don't have any experience with Instapots. Uh, I have a lot of experience with the stovetop cooking and it's pretty easy for me to do if I'm around. But, um, uh, but if you want to experiment with this pot, it might work fine. Um, all right, so, but you would want to soak them before cooking them. And one of the things with beans, we talked about this on some of the previous episodes, 
It works really well if you boil beans really hard for the first 10 or 15 minutes of cooking and then you turn the temperature down. And I'm not sure how it works with the Instant Pot and whether that's something that's achievable. But to get the texture you want, you really need to hit them with hard heat initially and then bring the temperature down. So I have this um, uh, Cuisinart, which is, um, uh, you'll see I'll have to hold it together when it goes because it's not in the best of shape. But I can't bring myself to buy a whole new one because it does technically work. Um, and, but it's basically just got a blade. Uh, uh, so I've got a dough blade and another thing, but I'm just using this regular blade in there. And we're going to start off with um, we're going to start off with our tahini. And um, there's something really fun that happens. Actually, let's do this. Uh, let's do this in a, um, in a bowl. This may be sort of fun to, to for you to just see. You can do this in the cuisinart, but it's going to be a lot more clear to see what's going on in the bowl. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put we're going to put this tahini in here. And this is um, uh, one full cup of tahini. So we'll put that tahini in there. And I think that's good enough. All right. So start mixing that around by like, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Good job. Keep going. And now we're going to add a little bit of water to this. And um, we're going to add a third of a cup of water. All right. So mix that around. Keep going. Keep going until it's all the way mixed. You're doing a good job. All right, see, so yeah, it's getting a little bit thick now, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting all stuck on my head. All right. So we'll put another third of a cup of water in there. Okay. Go ahead and keep mixing it. You want me to take over for a second? Yeah, just It's sort of funny stuff, isn't it? So tahini, for those of you who don't know, it's a sesame paste. So think of peanut butter, but instead of being made out of peanuts, it's made out of sesame seeds. And there's a lot of different varieties of tahini. Some of them have the whole hull of the sesame seed on there, and some don't. Some of them have toasted sesame seeds, and some are raw sesame seeds. And they can all have really different flavors. So, see this is coming together. I'm going to do water. Okay, you got it. So when we make the chickpea fritter sandwich at Clover, we do this process. Can I take it for a second to meet you? You're doing a great job. I just want to give a little whisking. We use this product to make tahini sauce. So this is what we put on the top of the sandwich. We have a little bit of lemon juice in it. And that's what we're going to add right now. I don't have lemon juice, so we're going to add vinegar. And we're going to do this, um, we're going to have as much vinegar as we would normally do lemon juice. And lemon juice would taste a lot better. Um, <laughs> I think this is a substitution out of necessity. This wouldn't be my ideal way to do it. I'd much rather use lemons, but like I said, we don't have any lemons right now. So, uh, so we have our tahini mix here. We could have done that all in here. I just did it separately uh, so you guys could see a little more clearly what was going on. And now we're going to get those chickpeas. So going to get these chickpeas that have been cooked um, to smithereens. So these are the these are the baking soda chickpeas and they really do cook down to a point where there's there's not much difference between the chickpeas and the liquid. Um, and you can see that there's a little bit of an off color and that's uh, that's due to the baking soda. Um, all right. And then and then we're going to add the tahini mix there. And like I said, we could have just done this all at once right in the beginning. Okay. And now um, we're going to add some garlic. So uh, let's see, we need to get a couple of garlic cloves here. Um, 
right. And now the garlic, uh, we're going to do two, two cloves here of garlic. Let's do these are a little bit small. Let's do three or four. Um, the garlic isn't going to blend up in there very well. So sometimes um, it hel it's helpful to give it a head start. And so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to smash this garlic up um, and process it a little bit before I put it in that machine. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to smash these garlics. The goal is we want these garlics blended in really smooth with the, uh, with the hummus. And you know, with this hummus, if I did those chickpeas right, uh, most of the texture we're gonna have in the end is actually gonna be from this garlic. And some people that don't want that texture do funny things like um, uh, putting the garlic in the oil um, or, or running, you know, grinding the garlic up and running through a, a strainer or something. So if you really want to get to a, a hummus that doesn't have any pieces in it at all, uh, you wouldn't want to put that in there. But we're gonna we're gonna put the raw garlic just chopped like that. Um, now there's one other ingredient that I wish I had here that I don't, which is um, cumin seeds. And I uh, carelessly used up my cumin seeds the other day. Um, I think maybe it was one that's making chili. <laughs> um, so we don't have cumin seeds either. Um, but that would be a nice thing to add to this as well. Um, but this is, uh, this is, this is coronavirus um, shutdown, so we don't have all the things we'd normally work with. So right now we've got chickpeas in here, we have tahini, which has water and lemon juice with it. Um, we have some garlic here. We're going to add a little bit of salt. And Violet, do you want to do the salt, sweetie? Yeah. So we need um, one teaspoon of that salt. Can we add that? And then I'm going to do a third of a cup of olive oil. Okay. So this is all for um, a recipe where we're starting out with one cup of um, chickpeas dry at the start. Now I'm going to turn this guy on and we're just going to let that run for a while. Uh, this might be a few minutes before you get to the texture. Now the chickpeas are hot right now, and that helps them uh, blend up really well. But it means that, I'll show up for a second so you can hear me a little better. It means that when we're done making this, it's going to be more liquidy than we'd want it to be, so we're going to refrigerate it before it's going to like cool down to the texture we want. Take a peek at this, and um, as I said, it's it's not going to be as stiff as what we'll be aiming to, but it's um, uh, but it's going to be well. Here, let me put it in the fridge too, because it is a little bit hot still. Um, but this is but this will like cool down and, and it will um, stiffen up, and this will become the silky hummus that we um, we serve normally at Clover. Um, we're going to make another hummus today, which is going to be. A, um, uh, what we, what I'm going to call a rustic hummus, but this is um, uh, a hummus where you don't have the tahini. And for a while, we served this kind of a hummus um, at Clover. We switched, had, I don't know if it was a couple of years ago, we switched, we initially started with the silky hummus, and we switched to the rustic hummus, then we switched back to the silky hummus. Um, I think the, the silky hummus is definitely a crowd pleaser. It has uh, a lot, as you just saw, it has a lot more fat in it, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is, uh, um, uh, it, it is like a different nutritional composition. And, um, but it's, the silky hummus is really delicious and everyone loves it. So we switched to that. But we used to make this more chunky hummus that we used for the chickpea fritter sandwich. And I like this hummus a lot. I thought it'd be fun to share with you guys. And so it's a very simple hummus and it's more forgiving if you're starting out with chickpeas that are um, that you don't have the baking soda. So for example, if you're just opening up a can of chickpeas, uh, you might end up with something much closer to what we're about to do right here. Um, and if you open up a can of chickpeas, you're just not going to get to a result that's similar to what you're used to getting in clover. It's just not, it's not going to happen. Um, 
So don't feel bad if, if what you end up with is a little different. Now you notice these are still hot. I, I don't know if you can see it, but there's steam coming out of them. Um, but these are still hot. And Violet, could you get me a little bit of salt to add to these? Sure, how much? Uh, let's do a teaspoon, just like the last time. Okay. Okay, so I'm just straining these out of the liquid that they were cooked in. Thank you, Violet. And um, you want grabbing that vinegar over there? So we're gonna do vinegar again because we don't have the lemon juice. Um, it's that one, it's a little cup right there by the zatar. Yep, that, it's just unlabeled, that's it. Yeah, there's no way to know what it is, but that's what it is. Except water. Yeah, it looks like, but it doesn't smell like water. Oh, wow. Yeah, vinegar. Um, all right, so we're gonna add that in there. That's in place of our lemon juice. And, um, and let's add a little bit of garlic to this and then we'll blend this all up. So this is um, something we do at Clover that I think anybody who's had the garlic job wishes um, wishes we would just buy pre-peeled garlic. But we still we still peel garlic every day. We, although we have a machine now that helps out a lot with that. Um, but we've tasted a lot of garlic. Most most restaurant companies and other kinds of food service. Okay, that's great. Most restaurant companies, other kind of food service, buy uh, pre-peeled garlics and. Um, uh, I've, we've tasted every single variety that we can get our hands on. I just don't think any of them taste really great. So, um, and you can see there's a little sprout coming out of that garlic. That's because this is last season's garlic. Um, and we're getting close to the point where it, it wants to get in the ground and sprout up. Um, but it, it'll be fine. It gets a little bit more bitter when that happens, but, um, but not, I think most people probably wouldn't even detect the difference. All right, so we're going to go ahead now and put a cap on the blender, Oops. and I've got a wand here that is going to help me. I'm going to start off at a slow speed. Again, these are hot, so we're going to end up with a hummus that looks a lot more liquidy than you would think you wanted, um, and that's going to be uh, related at least a bit to how hot the chickpeas are, but it helps them get smoother when they're hot. Now I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Now, you may have noticed I I ran that for a while in the Cuisinart, and I may have run it even longer if you guys weren't watching. Maybe three or four or five minutes. Uh, the longer you run it, the smoother it gets. And I'm running this uh, for sure quite some time here in the blender. the rustic hummus and so you can see it's uh, it's a little different texture with than what the other one was um, if you can see it's it's smooth oh, that spoon a little dirty. it's smooth but the um, you can see there's a little bit of graininess in it still and that's not really gonna go away not not with this style of hummus I can blend this and blend this and blend this and that's still going to be there to some extent so do you see when I move it around there's just a little more graininess with it uh, but it's a really yummy hummus, and if you don't have tahini at home, um, this is a great way to make it. If you, you hopefully some of you have lemons and uh, and cumin, you can definitely add that in. But if you don't have tahini, this is the way to do it. You want to taste it? It's still a little bit hot, sweet. I like let I like cool a little bit. I just don't want you burning your tongue. Um, all right, and so that's uh, that's how we make up hummus. And then I'm just going to show you the last thing I'm going to show you is just how we plate it. Um, Here's the screen. So, 
Um, what we typically do, the, the hummus is not going to be at its best texture because it's not cooled yet, but there's not a good way for me to... Um, there's yeah. a question. Questions? Okay. How much uh, cumin and lemon juice for the recipe? Yes, great question. Um, I will post that. The um, uh, I'll make sure I post it all for everybody. But it would be like two thirds a cup of lemon juice. The cumin is, is probably half a teaspoon or so. Uh, I, but I'll post the exact amounts. So, so what I would usually do is I would just um, either go in a circle like that with my spoon or I would go back and forth. But you usually want to create a little bit of texture and sort of scoop out a little space in that hummus. Um, and then, then I'll, I'll put a little bit of olive oil on it. And this should be familiar if you get hummus and clover. And this is, a, this is something that not everybody's necessarily going to have at home, but this is a spice mix called za'atar and it's really really delicious um, on hummus. If you don't have za'atar, there's other things you can use that would be great. Um, I mean it's good just the way it is. You could add some paprika, that could be really yummy. Um, and uh, let's see. So we're putting together some carrot sticks, that'd be yummy with this. Um, this will be a little snack for us, but you can do all sorts of things with hummus, I'm sure most of you know. And then I have um, some pita bread from Clover, and this has been in the freezer. And my favorite way to heat this up, so it's, it's delicious if you throw it in the oven, um, that works really well. And it, it, you can also put it in the toaster, so that also works really well. But if you have a, a flame, uh, in my mind, there's no better way to heat it up than with the flame. And what you need to do is you need to stand by it because you're going to have to keep turning it over and making sure it doesn't burn all the way. But um, you provide some really nice, like, toasty flavors. This is good with day-old pita, two-day-old pita. Um, it's good with fresh pita. Uh, if we had a safe way to do this at the restaurants, every single sandwich you order from Clover would be have bread that it was heated this way. Um, unfortunately, I don't, have, I don't know a way to do that. But, um, but if you're at home, this is a, and you have a gas oven, this is a really fun way to heat up your pita bread. And so I'm just, I'm just moving it often enough that it's not burning. And it'll probably take like two minutes, two or three minutes here. So it's, it's, um, it's a labor of love, but it's really yummy. Um, yeah, it will get little. It will get little bits like that that burn. You're noticing that blue. Yeah, um, and you can start to see this one actually has a crack in it, which would be like a defect in clover. We probably wouldn't make somebody's sandwich out of that bread. But um, uh, if it didn't have that crack in it, it would start to uh, it would start to puff up a little bit right now because the moisture in the middle of the pita breads would be expanding. They're almost here. But some of that char is, some, is a really nice flavor in the end, so I, I'm welcoming that. They were just about there. All right. So that's, that's what I wanted to do with this pita bread. Go ahead and cut some of these up. It's pretty hot at this point. Um, you want a little bite? Um, so the, the, the pita bread is, is what I would want. It's like, it's soft, a little steamy on the inside. You can see that. And it has like a little bit of a crunchy crust on the outside from the oven. Mm. Which is like really beautiful. And then you go ahead and you can use this to eat our omelets with. Mm. 
I just haven't had hummus for a long time. So that's sort of a fun thing to bring back in the kitchen. Um, that's it for today's show. We're gonna post these recipes online. Um, keep sending us pictures. I love seeing everything people are making. And um, we'll be back tomorrow.